graduates and guests, please stand for your senior officers of the University of Liverpool. Please be seated. I declare this congregation for the celebration of our graduates open. So, good morning, class of 2020, and welcome to your graduation ceremony. And welcome to our honored guests, your family and friends. Delighted you've been able to join us here today, and it's really great to have you all here in person uh, at long last. So, I'm Professor Tom Wally. I'm the Associate uh, Pro Vice Chancellor for Clinical Research here, and I'm standing in for the Pro Vice Chancellor of the Faculty who can't be here today. So I want to start by saying what a tremendous privilege and pleasure it is for me to be here today with you as we celebrate this really important milestone in your careers and your lives, together with your family and your fellow students and your lecturers and those who've supported you through your, in your journey to the uh, University of Liverpool. Now, most of you are graduating as bachelors of dental surgery, and we also welcome some of you who are graduating as doctors of dental sciences. Your graduation ceremony has, of course, been delayed by the pandemic, but nevertheless, it's a day to celebrate your achievements with your family and friends, and maybe a day to reflect a little bit. So at a ceremony like this, I think back to my own graduation many years ago in another university, in another degree, and thinking back to how, um, how what a day of mixed emotions it was, how pleased and proud I was to have completed my studies at long last, uh, how a bit sad I was that I wasn't going to be a student anymore, have to do without all those discounts, and uh, also a little bit fearful of what the world held going forward. Now that's what I should have been saying to you here in other circumstances, but of course it's all been very different for you because you've been students at a time like no other, and students all around the world have had their education totally disrupted by the pandemic in all kinds of ways, and your last few months as a student has been totally different to what you might have expected otherwise. And at times, it's been extremely tough for you all, and we acknowledge that. Particularly for you, more than any other student group, I think. I think uh, in the good old days before the pandemic, of course, uh, most dental procedures involved the creation of a, an aerosol incorporating the patient's saliva. Of course, uh, during the pandemic, this posed a very significant and at times unaccept unacceptable risk for the transmission of COVID. So at the outbreak of the pandemic, lots of dental practices had to experience severe restrictions, cut down the numbers of patients they were seeing, modify procedures to try to avoid aerosols as much as possible, have a lot of downtime between patients while they cleaned the surgery, reduce the numbers of patients that could be seen. So it's been uh, a difficult period for all dentists. Some surgeries have been able to offer emergency care, including one at the University of Liverpool Dental Hospital. But the consequences of all this for dental education were even more stark. For the most part, you gain experience by treating patients in a, uh, a large open plan multi-chair clinic. And as you understand, of course, those clinics pose a, a unique and enormous risk for contamination or cross-contamination between patients and contamination uh, of students and of staff. So uh, at the start of the pandemic, when so much was uncertain, it was very hard to see how um, education could continue, uh, particularly in that setting. So uh, at a time when infection rates were rising and uh, are still, of course, enormously high. So it wasn't even possible to see how we could actually carry on with face-to-face -face teaching because of the need for social distancing. So in the middle of March uh, 2020, when the national lockdown was declared, Many of you and many of our staff went home, and we had to think rapidly how we we're going to manage this. So in dentistry, things have gotten a bit better since then, and dental hospitals and dental practices have actively developed evidence-based approaches to minimize the spread of the virus. And these approaches have enabled dental services and dental education to resume in a safe manner. But that's now. Uh, March last year, uh, we were in a very different position. So fortunately, because it was March when you were sent home, most of you 
had, uh, were very close to completing your training, and the School of Dentistry could quickly identify that you had achieved all the necessary competencies to satisfy the General Dental Council. So only, the only thing standing between you and qualification was the final exam. And of course, the final exam had to be altered too. Uh, the OSCE uh, couldn't take place in its usual form, so we had to modify the exam quickly into something that involved uh, scenario testing where you were asked to solve clinical problems. And the staff from the school had to quickly develop online learning resources and resource mat and revision materials. And we all had to get used to using things like Zoom and MS Teams and all those strange things that we'd never heard of before. So it's been a learning experience for all of this, for all of us. And despite all those difficulties and the undoubted anxieties they caused many of you, the new style exams were delivered and of course all of you passed, so congratulations. Now since September 2020, most of you and your colleagues who can't be here today have been working as dentists for the first 12 months as foundation dentists, which I guess many of you finished, most of you finished in September. So I'm hoping that at this point your hand no longer shakes when you're giving that anesthetic injection. Um, I hope you've learned to cope with being independent practitioners with no one to check your work, uh, that you've learned to work with other professions, and that as well as smoothing out the, uh, your fillings, you've also learned to smooth out some of the rough bits in yourselves. So during that time, there's been slow return to something approaching normality in terms of dental practice. Some aspects of dentistry will have changed for good. So I don't think you'll ever reach again quite so readily for the high piece, uh, high speed hand pieces. And minimally invasive techniques will be increasingly prominent in the future. Dental education is still in the process of catching up the lost experience, lost clinical experience for its students. And that's going to continue for some time. Now you know all of this. So why am I repeating it here? I'm repeating it here to acknowledge for the record that you've had a pretty tough time in the past 18 months. And uh, we know you've had long days and sleepless nights and difficult times, all caused by, or exacerbated, final dent is not exactly a, a toddler at the best of times, but all exacerbated by the pandemic. And uh, the pandemic has devastated and divided people and continues to do so, but at times it's brought out the best in human spirit. And it's brought it out in you because you have displayed the most amazing resilience, uh, the most amazing determination and dedication despite the stress of all of this. And that's been no small achievement. And the difficulties you've faced intensify what I think should be our congratulations to you for, the, for what you've actually managed to achieve in that time. And as dentists, you've carried on treating patients despite all of this with skill and dedication and even at times with courage. Um, so dentistry is a noble profession and you're privileged to have joined that noble profession but that noble profession is privileged to have you as its members as well and don't ever doubt that. So you didn't do it alone but no doubt there have been many lonely and even scary times in the past 18 months um, of your, the last four, six months of your undergraduate time and 12 months of your first clinical practice but you did it by supporting one another and being supported by your professional teachers here in the university and in clinical practice by your fellow health professionals in the NHS. And of course, at all times being supported by your family and friends who are here today. So you and your family uh, can be very proud of this. And we in the university, and here I speak for the whole university, the faculty, and particularly for Professor Bissell and all the staff in the dental school are very proud, immensely proud, of the manner in which you've demonstrated that courage and adaptability and perseverance and commitment to others to deliver high patient, high quality patient care. So you're an inspiration to us and I want to acknowledge that. And I'd invite your family and your friends now to applaud your achievements in the past 18 months. <laughs> So today is all about you and your achievements and your personal successes here at the university. It's also a day to look forward to the future and feel excited about your aspirations and your future career. One thing we've all learned is that none of us know what the future is going to hold, whether it's a pandemic or goodness knows what. And we all need those qualities of resilience and flexibility that you've been displaying for the past 18 months. Now in your professional careers, you'll see new diseases that people never thought of before, 
come and hopefully go. So when I qualified uh, as a medic in 1980, no one had ever heard of HIV disease. And after many years as a fatal diagnosis, it's now become a condition which we can't cure yet, but we can treat people well and in a manner which is compatible with the normal life expectancy, and that's a huge achievement. So um, as far as we know, COVID-19 didn't exist when you entered uh, your final year in dental school. And this too will pass. It's not gone yet by any means. It's not a problem we've solved yet, with over 150 people still dying every day. But its outlook has been turned around by advances in basic and clinical science in the past 18 months. But just as you think you're getting there, along comes the Omicron variant, and you're wondering where do we go from here. In some ways, we're all back to where we started. Uh, I'm all back wearing masks today, very notably, and thank you very much for that. Dentistry changes as well. So in the past 20 years, there have been enormous advances. So for instance, titanium implants have become an almost routine option for replacing missing teeth with a 10-year success rate of 90%. You're using all kinds of new materials which bond well to the tooth structure, and that's allowed you to develop techniques which are much less destructive in your restoration of teeth. And one thing that's going to affect all of us in healthcare is the rise of digital approaches to managing patients. So in dentistry, for instance, conventional impression techniques are being replaced by intraoral scanning and then linking that to uh, digital milling or printing processes uh, with computer-aided devices. And there are lots of other examples. These advances in science and technology have changed the outlook of patients for the better. And undoubtedly, in your professional career, there will be many similar approaches which you will have to learn as time goes by. In particular, as we move more towards prevention rather than treatment after the event. And of course, many of you will spend your careers working either directly or indirectly for the NHS. And the NHS is constantly changing as an organization to meet the demands of the population. Now, uh, if you haven't discovered already, you will know that the NHS is not always the easiest place to work in or not always the easiest uh, organization to work with. But uh, for all its flaws in relation to dentistry, and particularly in relation to access to dentistry, the NHS is still the finest health service in the world, and I know you'll want to play your role in maintaining that position. But not everything changes. The fundamentals of dentistry haven't changed and will not in the future. Your patients will always want rapid and effective treatment for their dental problems. The relief of pain and suffering and the enhancement of quality of life, these will remain at the heart of your profession forever. I'll flag up three other things that won't change. The first is the need to be a lifelong learner, just as you have been during the, the pandemic in the past 12 months in particular. But that's something you need to keep up for the rest of your career. You need to commit to always being curious and asking questions and always striving to do things better. This is the paradox of graduation. Normally, we'd have you here and we'd say, you're now safe to be let loose on the general public and you've been let loose in the general public for the past 12 months and you've learned how little you actually know and you've actually had to find out all that at the, at the sharp end. Um, so learn from your patients and listen to them. They'll always be your best teachers. Question yourself if, in your care of those patients, you're doing the right thing and if you're doing it as well as you possibly can. But also, forgive yourself for your mistakes. You will make mistakes because we all do, we're human, but learn from your mistakes all the time. And just as you should always be a learner, you should also always be a teacher. Share your experiences and your skills with colleagues and future students. The second thing that won't change is the need to support one another as you have been over the past 18 months. As friends and as colleagues, because you're part of a great profession, and because you and we all share the same aim of improving the health and well-being of our patients and of the population, with us the people of Liverpool or the Northwest or wherever. The third thing that won't change is the core of your profession and every healthcare profession, which is uh, the things you must never compromise on. So never compromise on the respect you show your patients uh, or your own integrity or honesty or your willingness to go the extra mile, because that's what people will uh, need most from you. Don't compromise on compassion, which is the hardest of all qualities and your patients will expect and deserve your complete commitment. There'll be lots of times, and I'm sure you've experienced this already, when that's very hard to give, when you're exhausted and frustrated and you've just had a bad day. Um, but always give your patient hope. 
give your patient confidence in you, even sometimes when you don't feel confidence in yourself, in your own abilities perhaps. And E is the worst thing that afflicts your patient, which is always fear for any health professional. Uh, people are very nervous about what they're going to go through. So smile, even if it's behind your splatterproof uh, visor or under your face mask, and have a kind and reassuring word. It's not just good chairside practice. It does really make a difference to people. So grab hold of every one of those thousand little moments if you can make life better and change the life of your patients. I have one final piece of advice in all of this, which is um, enjoy your work and enjoy your career. Um, know that what you do really matters. And that's a great thought to start a day or end a day. Now the pandemic has made us truly appreciate our loved ones and the experiences, the memories we made together. So let's all celebrate together today. Let's thank your family and friends who got you here. Uh, it isn't just you who've gone through dental school, they've been on the journey with you as well in all kinds of ways. So we want to take a moment to celebrate the role that your loved ones, and I hope some of them is here as guests today, have played in your success because today is a day of celebration for them too. So let's take a moment to thank them for their support to you and their personal sacrifices. So let's thank them with our applause. Let's also thank your lecturers and teachers here at the university who provided you with the training and the support to become practical and compassionate and resilient in dentistry with the skills and qualities required to practice in the 21st century and not just today, but with whatever the unknowns tomorrow may actually throw at you. Be confident in yourselves that you have those skills, not just to be safe beginners as the GDC says, but actually to go on developing throughout your career. We hope that today is a day for you to enjoy a return to this great city and for you and your guests to receive a warm welcome from your university, hopefully in contradistinction to the freezing wind out there this morning. So we hope you'll join us after the ceremony for a reception in the Montfort Hall in the Guild. Uh, we hope the city of Liverpool will always feel like home for you. Uh, we hope this is a place where you've made memories and friends that'll last a lifetime. Um, our Victoria building, the one with the, the clock tower, is now a beautiful and iconic gallery and museum, and it's our most recognizable backdrop in lots of many social media posts. And I've seen many of you have your photographs taken with it in the background in the brief period of sunshine we had this morning. So uh, it gave rise, of course, to the very term of Red Brick University, and we're the original Red Brick University. Now, as a student, you'd have walked past a plaque on that building, and you probably have never noticed it, but it uh, gives the university motto, which is, for the advancement of learning and the ennoblement of life. So that's the foundation on which the university was built, and it's a motto that guides us in all that we do. So our aim is to inspire and engage and enable every student to fulfill your potential by raising awareness, by challenging barriers you may face, and by providing opportunities. And you have certainly advanced your learning, and you have and you will continue to ennoble life throughout your professional careers. You've been stretched to think beyond the uh, textbook, beyond the lecture theatre, beyond uh, the clinic. And you've been encouraged to apply that knowledge you've acquired to the world around you and continue to acquire more knowledge. Your University of Liverpool education has enabled you to realise just how far you can go and provided you with the skills you need to get there. Our university, by which I mean yours and mine, has a long and successful history of graduating inspiring students, just like you, who go on to achieve great things. And you too have now joined our talented international community of graduates this is a really important part of the University of Liverpool family, and this supports our students in many ways, and some of these you may have actually experienced. So uh, delivering lectures and workshops and offering work placements and mentoring. And we hope, like many of our past students, you'll stay in touch with us and help and guide and support our future students and broaden their horizons through your experiences. Because it's through you that the university is known. You are our greatest ambassadors and it's through your achievements and your careers that you will become role models and an important source of inspiration for the next generation of students and dentists. Never forget how important you are to the university. You are the beating heart of the university. Without you, it would just be a collection of buildings and lecture theatres and even clinics and just red bricks. So. Um, when we work together, the university becomes a place 
where we can uh, make discoveries, where we can form ideas, make friendships, develop careers and change lives. It's when we work together as staff and as students that education is truly transformational. So despite the many challenges you've faced, I hope you'll also remember many happy and joyful moments during your time here in Liverpool, not least today. We thank you and congratulate you on all that you've achieved during your time here, and we wish you good luck and every success in the future. Thank you. And I now invite Professor Vince Bissell, Dean of the School of Dentistry, to present graduates from our class of 2020. Associate Pro Vice-Chancellor, it gives me tremendous pleasure to present to you the following graduates from the class of 2020. Charlotte Laura Wilson Dewhurst. <laughs> Nicholas Neil Longridge. <laughs> Sophia Danielle Louise Matia. Shawnee Louise Wignall. <laughs> Chloe Jane Dale. <laughs> Emily Grace D. <laughs> Fiona McCabe. Abby Marie Judson. Sarah Winifred Caton. Gemma Louise Smith. Jennifer Grace Patricia Bone. Aoife Harvey. Lauren Catherine Keefe. Delma Joseph. Anna Katharina Garner. Jack Dixon. Faye Louise Holworth. <laughs> Callum Smith. <laughs> Alice Young. <laughs> Amanda Tomini. <laughs> Joshua Michael Jackson. Sophie Daniels. <laughs> Davine McCourt. <laughs> Surinda Sandu. <laughs> Ian Edward Holt. <laughs> Alexander Chan. Elena Mary Burrows. <laughs> Owen Llewellyn. <laughs> Abigail Cartwright. <laughs> Jordan Danielle Kumar. <laughs> Chloe Majar.
pause for a minute and it gives me great pleasure to present one of the University Faculty Learning, Teaching and Student Experience Awards. So these awards recognize and value and reward staff who've made an outstanding contribution to innovation in teaching and supporting learning. Our university has numerous examples of exceptionally talented and committed staff who work extremely hard to ensure that our students receive an excellent experience while at the university. These awards reflect the value we place on providing our students with that experience worthy of a leading Russell Group institution. So our award winners this morning are a team recognized for their innovative approach to capturing individual development data and patient, and patient feedback for students in the School of Dentistry. The school's technology enhanced learning team developed new interfaces and data handling mechanisms that encouraged reflection and development. The team built a dental portal to gather and triangulate and display patient data and satisfaction scores assigned to individual students and to clinics and it's now used by more than 200 students. This work exemplifies the great potential for technology enhanced learning when students, technical and academic staff work together. These developments have improved the student learning experience and proved invaluable in allowing the school to demonstrate that it was addressing the requirements of the General Dental, General Dental Council as our regulator. The work has been presented at the European Board of Medical Assessors Conference and there are plans to produce publications so that other institutions elsewhere can benefit from the experience developed here in Liverpool. So here today to collect the award on behalf of the team is the team's leader, Matt Cripston School of Dentistry. Associate Pro Vice Chancellor, I am delighted to present to you the remaining graduates from the class of 2020. Edward Benjamin Simon. Balraj Singh Rana. Thomas Murray. Alexander Buzajameri. Lydia Rose Payne. Catherine Olivia Spencer Coulson. Hajra Aziz. Hannah Lowry Davis. Emily Barr. <laughs> Eleanor Jane Barras. <laughs> Sumaya Karolia. <laughs> Alexander Martin Strang. <laughs> Thomas McArdle. AJ Singh Full. Jake Walton. James William King Tours. Kajal Kotecha. Gurpinda Kira. Vanit Sian. <laughs> Suman Aki. <laughs> Abra Abulula. <laughs> Callum Thomas McCartney. Dareen Tema Ibrahim Mahmoud Sharif.
Niall Arthur Lundy. <laughs> Neelan Mystery. <laughs> Leanne Chapman. <laughs> Hannah McMullen. <laughs> Jaya Wallier. Catherine Stahl. <laughs> Emily Jane Lawton. <laughs> Lucy Susanna Rucroft. <laughs> Farial Fakir. <laughs> Mira Nayan Shah. Elspeth Ruth Patricki. <laughs> Muhammad Reza Ul Haq. <laughs> Rida Ansar Pathan. <laughs> Ikra Amin. <laughs> Juweria Uzma Razul. Jamal Sheikh. Yeah. Umar Mahmoud. Yeah. And Danish Jabba. Yeah. So let's congratulate all our graduates. And now I'd like to invite Hajj Raziz to join us on stage to reflect on her student experience. Associate Pro Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, friends, family and fellow students, Today we celebrate our collective, collective success and perseverance during a time when moments of happiness were scarce and more valuable than ever. I am humbled to be standing here in front of you, giving you this speech in front of some of the most selfless and accomplished academics I've had the pleasure to be taught by, alongside some of the most resilient and hardworking students I'm grateful to have met. I will try my best to articulate the flurry of emotions we are all feeling. Being a Southern girl at heart, <laughs> I never imagined another city or its people coming close to my beloved London. I couldn't have been more wrong. I distinctly recall my first memory in Liverpool. I was running late for my interview. Upon arriving at Lime Street, I approached this large framed gentleman, asking him for directions towards the dental school. It turned out he was the friendliest and most welcoming person I would ever meet. His smile reminded me of home, I can, and I can say with confidence, to this day, I do not know what he said. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes to show, to making someone feel like they belong transcends the realm of language, ethnicity, race, or religion. The people of Liverpool are the heart of the city, and the students are the heartbeat. We are an inclusive community, supporting one another's ambitions and enabling us to succeed in the face of all challenges. They are a testament to the university's ethos and values standing true. Challenges. During our time at university, we've all become all too familiar with that noun. Whether it be meeting assignment deadlines, writing dissertations, turning up to 9am lectures, treating patients on clinic, learning new skills, like doing your weekly shop or just being away from home. We've all done it. For many of us, including myself, there were moments of doubt, sadness, joy, relief, and a few weekends we can't quite remember. <laughs> but what makes it all worth it 
are the people we won't forget. The strangers who became friends, the friends that are now family, and those that are here with us today. On behalf of every graduate, I'd like to express our heartfelt gratitude to every tutor, professor, lab technician, student accommodation officer, the librarians at Sydney Jones, the list is endless. Thank you also to all, all the proud parents, siblings, spouses, and loved ones that have joined us today to celebrate one of the most monumental achievements one can attain. You have been with us every step of the way, tirelessly facilitating our learning, lifting our spirits, when we lost hope, sending us prayers and luck for exams, we thought we would fail. We would not be here without you all. On a more personal note, I cannot let this opportunity go without thanking my own parents, without whom I would not be the young woman I am today. As a daughter of two working class, first generation immigrants, I wasn't exactly born with a spoon, silver spoon in my mouth. But what I did have were two parents who taught me the true value of education, who instilled in me strength, humility, and the desire to serve those in need. To quote a famous writer, Dr. Samuel Johnson, the true measure of a man is how he treats someone who can do him absolutely no good. These words have never felt truer. As we stand on the pinnacle, having achieved everything we set out to, it is now down to us what we make of our future and the path we lay for those behind. I wish I could say I had made my parents proud, but the truth is I'm proud to call them my parents. Thank you for filling my dreams by letting them, for letting me build them on your buried ones. It's never easy to find the right words, especially when you need them the most. My fellow graduates, we have achieved what dreams are made of in the most unimaginably difficult circumstances. I truly believe you can accomplish anything. So I say to you, take pride in how far you've come and have faith in how far you will go. Congratulations, class of 2020. Thank you, Hatcher, for that, and thank you for your kind words for the school. And I'd like to say that's the kind of um, speech that inspires us as staff in our teaching of you. And uh, that man at Lime Street that Hatcher encountered, he was applying that well-known social discrimination factor in Liverpool, which is whether you are a red or a blue. <laughs> so, and your issue where I'm not remembering some weekends, well, that brings me to mind my own daughter who graduated here about four years ago. And seeking inspiration around what I might talk about today, I asked her, who had given the talk? Don't remember. <laughs> what did they talk about? Don't know. <laughs> so you don't remember much about graduation, do you? Oh yeah, it was brilliant. <laughs> so, so like those lost weekends, uh, I hope you have a brilliant uh, day. Congratulations on all you've achieved. And my last duty here is to declare this congregation for the celebration of our graduates closed. And we always end these ceremonies with uh, a prayer in Latin. And for those of you who don't speak fluent Latin, I'll translate as we go along. Um, Salvat sit universitas nostra. May our university prosper and thrive. Quod precantes consergamus. And praying thus, let us all stand. Thank you. Guests, please stand. <laughs> Graduates and guests, thank you once again.